Medical self-help is an emergency measure to be used only in cases of sudden or extraordinary misfortune. If people require medical care in the course of normal, everyday living, they should always be treated by a doctor. However, when disaster strikes, you may not be able to obtain trained medical aid in time. There are many forms of disaster. They can happen to you and your family at any moment. This film is one of a series on medical self-help. Its purpose is to teach you what to do in an emergency situation when there is no doctor. This powerful x-ray machine, a tool of medical science, is being used for healing purposes. The radiant energy it emits is able to kill all living tissue within its beam both sick and healthy cells of the human body. Its invisible rays so highly penetrative that protective shielding with lead glass windows must be used. X-rays are much like the gamma rays of radioactive fallout. We began our picture with X-rays because you are all to some degree familiar with their effects. But radioactive fallout is another matter. If you're like most people, it creates many questions in your mind. And you have doubtless read or heard some falsehoods and misconceptions. This film will tell you what you need to know about fallout, so that if our country is ever subjected to a nuclear attack, you can help yourself and your family to survive its dangers. For fallout is probably the most dangerous product of nuclear disaster in terms of the number of people who could be affected. It is also the one from which we are best able to protect ourselves. Let's examine what happens when a nuclear weapon is exploded near the Earth. First, there is blast or the pressure wave created by the explosion along with heat the most intense ever created on Earth. Both will extend great distances from the point of the explosion, from one to 20 or 25 miles, depending on the size of the weapon. However, the further away you are from the site of the explosion, the less are the chances you will suffer the fatal effects of blast and heat. There is yet a third immediate result of a nuclear detonation, initial radiation. The final effect is residual radiation, the main concern of this film, or radiation that follows the explosion and one that may remain at high altitudes for some time before falling back to Earth. What exactly is residual radiation? Our sun, like other stellar bodies of the universe, is a giant nuclear furnace burning at temperatures of millions of degrees while emitting various types of radiation. Among these are gamma rays, shorter in wavelength than their closest neighbor, X-rays. The Earth's atmosphere prevents these radiations, dangerous to the health of man and animal, from reaching our planet. However, when a nuclear weapon is exploded, Man is creating on Earth, in the splitting of atomic nuclei, his own nuclear furnace to produce the gamma and beta radiations of outer space. Let's see now just how this radiation is created. At the time of the burst, vast amounts of dirt, stone, and other debris, vaporized by the heat of the explosion, are sucked up into the rising cloud. As the mushroom cloud forms, these particles are made radioactive, for as they cool and condense, they are contaminated by residue from the bomb. These particles, when they fall back to Earth, are what we call radioactive fallout. Can you or anyone else predict with accuracy 
the pattern by which fallout particles will return to Earth? The answer is no, for fallout will depend on the number, size, and location of nuclear weapons exploded and the direction of upper air currents. Let's, for example, explore the fallout produced by one of these nuclear weapons. It sends its column of radioactive material up to 80,000 feet, or about 16 miles or more, above the Earth. Here, the radioactive particles, beginning to drift downward, are at the mercy of upper air currents that vary from day to day. Descending at various altitudes, through many different layers of air that may be moving at varying speeds and directions. Thus, winds on the surface of the Earth give little help in determining the direction or the occurrence of fallout. Meteorologists, with their special instruments, however, can appraise altitudes as well as the total distance fallout will be carried. In a nuclear attack, keep tuned to your local radio station. It will keep you posted where fallout is taking place and its approximate amount. Though you may be able to see this dust once it reaches the Earth, you cannot see or detect the radiation it emits without the aid of radiological instruments. Nor can you taste, smell, or feel this radiation. Why is fallout so dangerous to human and animal life? because each particle gives off radiation as if it were a tiny X-ray machine. This radiation consists mainly of gamma rays, which are extremely penetrating. Like X-rays, gamma rays are able to injure, even destroy the cells of our body if we are exposed to a sufficient dosage long enough, or if we eat or drink material contaminated by fallout particles. Exposure to gamma rays can make you sick, can even cause death. However, no matter how long one may be exposed to fallout, he does not become radioactive, nor can anyone catch radiation sickness from him like a contagious disease. In fact, this radiation cannot make anyone or anything radioactive. Now let us suppose that fallout has descended on this can. We'll let salt represent fallout dust. The particles don't go through the tin. The radiation does, but radiation is harmless to all except living material. It has no effect on the food inside. Now, if you wipe away the fallout particles, or better still, wash them away, the food inside cannot be contaminated and is perfectly safe to eat. The same is true of all foods and liquids that have been protected by packagings or containers, even the thinnest layer of cellophane. If you don't swallow the dust, there is no ill effect. If water for washing is in short supply, canned goods that may have been exposed to fallout can be handled safely with a piece of paper towel. Use one sheet of paper to lift the can and turn it upside down. There is no dust on the bottom. Now dispose of the paper. Wipe the sides of the can with a new piece of towel. And don't forget to put the contaminated paper in a covered receptacle. Now open the clean top. There will be no harmful particles in the food itself. A sealed loaf of bread that has been exposed to fallout can be salvaged in a similar manner. Turn the loaf upside down to expose the bottom, which will be clear of dust. Then dispose of the towel. Now insert a sharp knife through the wax paper at the center of the loaf and cut upward, making a slot four or five inches lengthwise. Insert your fingers through the slot and rip the paper slowly open. The bread can be safely removed to a clean place.
finally dispose of the wax paper. Contaminated vegetables, such as potatoes, can be pared like this. Use a clean piece of newspaper, and working first in one corner, cut off one end. Move to a clean surface of the paper, and peel in this manner. Move to another area of the paper, and remove the other end. Dispose of all peelings and soiled paper carefully. After handling any contaminated food containers or vegetables, wash your hands. Fallout dust is dangerous, but it can be dealt with by following safe procedures. There is another widespread legend, the fear that fallout spells death to all life on Earth. The plain fact is, that even if a great number of nuclear weapons were exploded, the resulting fallout would cover only a small area of the world's total land mass. The real concern then is this. If we are in that area, how do we protect ourselves? Like x-rays, radiation from fallout can go through almost every kind of building material. Over 99% would pass through glass. Sixty-six percent through wood sheathing. Fifty percent through a brick veneer wall. But only one percent of gamma radiation would penetrate 18 inches of concrete. And, though it's not a building material, it's important to know that only 1% would pass through 25 inches of earth. Quite aside from the shielding effect of building materials, the intensity of radiation decreases with the square of the distance from the source. Thus, 10 feet away from a particle of fallout, the radiation rate is only 1% of that encountered at a distance of one foot. Other things being equal, the central parts of a building are safer. The radiation rate, or the intensity from fallout, decreases with the passage of time. In fact, for every sevenfold increase in time, the radiation will be reduced by a factor of 10. That means that at seven hours after the explosion, the radiation level will be about 10% of its intensity at one hour. At 49 hours, it will be about 1%. Within two weeks, the radiation rate can be expected to decay to about one-tenth of 1%. One Therefore, the most vital period to seek protection from fallout is the first few days after nuclear attack, even more so the first few hours. But remember, even with the passage of time, a low level of radiation can be dangerous. That is why you may need to remain within a sheltered area for as long as two weeks. These, then, are the three basic factors in protection against fallout. Time, distance, and shielding. Time, meaning the 